Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3DS Max. As we continue to put together the head for our Adat Walker vehicle. Now, in the last video, I was playing with the mirror tool, and I was getting this to, to mirror off, and I ended up with a, a few extra vertices. And I don't know really what part of my brain was on temporary shutdown mode to cause me to use the mirror modifier. What I should have been using, as most of you probably already know, was the symmetry modifier. And, you know, I'm just going to have to attribute it to the time of day, lack of coffee. I can come up with a, just several excuses as to why I would have done that. Now that is an awesome shape. This should definitely be a new version of the Adat Walker. Okay, so uh, let's switch that over to Z. And see, the symmetry modifier is actually going to weld the central vertices in place for us. We got a little bit of a, a funniness going on right in there that we'll need to investigate. But I wanted to make sure that I did clarify that because that was, well, you know, just one of those moments. I guess everybody's allowed one a day, and that was mine. But I'm going to consider that last video to technically be yesterday. So if I have another moment today, that's completely justified, just so that everybody's completely down and they understand that. I, I have a free extra moment coming to me. Now, let's loop all these together. I, what I want to do, in fact, there's a couple of ways I can do this. Let's grab vertices, and let's see. If I line myself up, and let's do a marquee selection right in through here. And I got out. I got most of everybody on the center line. Now let's also grab these guys as well. So that's everybody near the center. Now let's see here. If I show the end result, there we go. So I can pull all those guys through, and then that should uh, invoke the symmetry modifier to split that right down the middle. So we can come back up here to symmetry, and let's press F4. That cleans up any of the weird seam issues that we had. So let's go ahead and convert that over to a brand new editable poly. And that cleans all that up, makes everybody happy. Now let's take a look at starting to work on the, the top part of our vehicle here. Uh, so I want to get this little risen spot up at the very uh, tip top. And there's a pretty interesting shot of it. It's got this little kind of tapering wedge along the back. And if we cycle through some of these, and there's another shot. Kind of shows some of the plating going on in the back. And there's another good one. This one, here we go. You can really see how that kind of wedge shape sits back there behind everything. You can see all the little greebles and pointless extrusions and whatnot that are sitting all over the place. We could also maybe go ahead and do that while we're in this video. Now this little spot right here. In fact, I'm going to take care of that first. I, I don't know why. I just suddenly feel like it. Because it should be pretty fun to do. Let's grab vertices. And uh, I want to make sure it's vertices on this object, so make sure we have this guy selected. And the mirror is still... Okay, yeah, I don't want to mirror that guy. So let's convert this over to an editable poly at this point. And now let's grab vertices. Now if I get really close here, I mean really close, we can grab these vertices. And that grabs somebody over there as well, so... All right, and then we'll come down here and zoom in very carefully and grab these vertices. And that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to try something, and it's going to bite me, all right? Everybody's used to the fact that when I switch on edge constraints, I can never remember to switch it back off. We've come to accept that and acknowledge it. Now let's just move on. Uh, so, okay, that's moving, but it's not taking uh, that other piece with it. But that's okay for now. Let's just go ahead and keep sliding it back to about here, and then I'll take a look at what's getting left behind and if we can fix that very easily. I hope so. So let's see, if I grab here, let's see if I slide this back. Oh, I see, I see. I have a little bit of nastiness there, but I think we can, I think we can make it work. Actually, you know, there's another way to do this that might be better. Let me undo. See, now because I don't have that Direct 3D stuff going on, I can do that. Um, we could make a split, chop that out, and replace some polygons. I'm a little... Well, I just flat out don't want to do that, but I mean, I will if it comes to it. Let me slide these guys back out of our way. Now, if I look really closely in here, do I even have an area where this flattened out? I mean, I'd like to think that I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually the piece that I was looking for. So let's see if I can get that same selection down here. I mean, maybe if 
if everything just works out and the planets align, I can do this and then slide this back. Oh, we lost something. Now that looks good. So did I lose somebody up here? Uh, he's way back there in the distance. We don't want to move him. All right, well, you know what? I'll just replace some polygons. So when in doubt, fix it with a hammer. So let's see here. Let's grab edges. And I should have an edge right there. And we can't extrude that out because I have an edge, ex edge constraint so on, but I wanted to try and see what that kind of happened like. So let's pull this out. And that seems to be working. I'm going to try something real quick. Let's grab this contraption. And it's currently at a Z of 131.03. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. And I grabbed everybody. Okay, so these must be combined into the same object now. Which is... is that, no, no way. I had the wrong guy selected. Well, that explains much. Come here, you. Just this guy. And let's copy that to the clipboard. Let's drag this up into the air. Cool. Now, the only reason I did that was just so I can kind of see what's going on over here. Because I'm thinking, if I grab vertices, we frame up right here on this vertex, pull back just a little bit. In fact, let me grab two vertices, and I'll frame up on the pair of them. Now, I should be able to target weld from here to there. And then come down here and target weld from here to here. And that should close that back up. Now it looks like we've lost some of the depth in doing that. So let me see what's going on here. Ah, uh, I see. Oh, okay, that's one of the faces we ended up deleting. Okay, well that makes sense then. Yeah, things got a little bit uh, knocked out of whack, but we can fix it. There should be a vertex hiding. Is he all the way back here? Let's get this guy out of the way. Aha. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, this, this really all got kind of messed up. So we need to fix that. So I'm going to slide this. Let's turn off edge constraints for now. Because I'll probably end up having to make all this stuff planar again when I'm done. Uh, which is always fun. But let's pull that stuff down. And let's see here. Got Now that's part of the bevel. I don't really want to mess with that. So what we've got is a missing polygon. Yeah that we need to replace. So I'm going to switch over to edges, grab this guy, and let's just shift drag him down. I'll switch over to vertices, and let's grab these two verts. Let's just pull them, really, I don't care, anywhere down here is fine. Just get them in the screen so we can see where everything is. And there we go. And let's go to target weld. And bump, bump, and then here, and then here. Cool. Okay, now we should be able to target weld you there, and then target weld you to here, and everybody should be happy. We should have a little recessed area. Now, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to grab this guy, and let's uh, make sure that it is planar. So we can draw stuff on it here in a minute. Let's go back to editable poly mode. Uh, grab Z translate and 131.03. Drop that back down where it belongs. And we have a little bit of uh, poke through. So let's find out what's poking through so that we can get that out of the way. Wrong shape. Give me this guy. Oh, it's that. Well, looky, looky. Let's see, let's, let me just undo and get him back down there where he belongs. Let me see if I can just kind of fake that out by pulling this guy forward. 
I don't think it's going to go. Um, let's see, it's pulling the proper dimension. Actually, yeah, that'll work. Just enough so that it's it's still recessed. It's still a different area. And also, just because I, I noticed this tapering down here, I'm going to grab edges. I'm just being a little bit of a stickler on myself here. Let's just kind of pull that in so that this looks a little more planar. Uh, so it doesn't look like it tapers out on the way out. Then we can grab these polygons, pull out just a tiny little bit further, and there we go. So I'm liking that. Now, let's come over here. And really, this looks pretty easy. I mean, you know, cylinder, cylinder box, pipe uh, box, maybe a, maybe a hole cut in it or a half a sphere on it. There's, you know, it could be a bunch of different things, but let's go ahead and just put something together for that. So let's go to the create panel. And let's start with a cylinder. Actually, you know what? Nobody's really standing over my shoulder with their Star Wars script. Nah, I was thinking about sticking a capsule in there, but I don't think I will. I think I'll just go with cylinders. Actually, you know what? On second thought, let's go with boxes, and I'll just chamfer them down to make them look nice. So, box. Now, these are going to be rotated, as you can see here. They have to kind of fit widthwise into that gap. So, let's see here. What if I don't build it that way for starters, though? What if I build it just like this? Let's go over into our options. Let's grab the height and pull that down, but like so. Let's make a copy of this guy, and let's rotate it. I'm going to turn on uh, rotation snapping so that I can rotate 90 degrees by some craziness. So make sure you're rotating locally, and then the craziness doesn't happen, and everybody's happy. Uh, let's see. So there's our little cross section. We could make that a little bit shorter. Uh, let's see if I pull the width down. And that looks pretty good, at least for starters. And let's see, we need a box with a little pipey donut. Actually, you could probably call out a torus if you really wanted to and stick half a torus in there. But if I use a pipe, I can uh, chamfer it out and make it look kind of torus like. Uh, so let's see, let's just go back to creating boxes for a moment. Actually, wait a minute, hang on, what am I saying? I got a perfectly good box right here. So if I slide this up and make a copy of it, and you know what, hang on, let's do that locally. That should make things a little easier. So there we go, and now let's just change the settings on that. So we'll increase that, we'll increase the length, let's pull down the height a little. And so they're still kind of touching each other, which is pretty good. Now let's come back over here, and let's see, we need to go under our extended primitives, and let's see, uh, I, I'm thinking pipe from, uh, from Maya, so let's see, where do they hide that over here, chamfer, spindle, jengon, it, it all comes back to you after a minute. I swear I've drawn one of these before, oh well, I just, I honestly just don't remember. So let's see, let's just grab a cylinder. And if I just grab a cylinder and pull it out. Am I really that crazy? I mean, has it been that long since I've had to draw one of these? I suppose. Oil tag, spindle, gengon, gengon, heat, chamfer cylinder. Those are so cool, but that's not what I'm going for at all. Okay. If it's right in front of me and you're snickering, you know, more power to you. It's totally cool by me. Tube! It's not called a pipe, it's called a tube. That's why you can't find it, Zachary. All right, so, shoomp, and then there you go, and then there you go. Sorry, guys, I just haven't had to draw one of those in a few minutes, and it's totally slipped my mind. So there we go. So then we have that, and uh, what other basic components do we need? We need a box that maybe just has a little extrusion at the top and then some sort of hemispherical thing. So let's grab this guy and we'll shift drag out another copy. Now what's the size ratio? It's about the same, maybe a little bigger. So we'll increase our length just a little bit. We'll increase our height just a little bit. Let me take my, uh, let's see, my length segments and increase that by one. Let's press F4 so I can see all my edges. Now, uh, let's do something else. Let's come over here, grab a sphere, and let me just try this. Let's just draw a little sphere right here. Hemisphere to 0.5, and chop is good. 
Now, segments. Let's really pull that down. All right, so looking okay so far. The only other thing I want to do, let's get out of that tool. Let me shift drag out yet another copy of this because there's kind of like this underlying connector piece underneath the whole thing. And to build that, what I'm going to do is take my height down really low. We'll pull the length down as well, and then we'll just increase width until it connects everybody. Okay, now a lot of these, actually all these, need to get converted over. This guy has way too many height segments, so I'm glad I noticed that. Uh, we can also, let's see, let's kill down the, the height segments. Cap segments are fine. Let's take this down. We don't need it to really be quite so high. Let's try 12. I think 12 will be just fine for us. Now, you and you and you and your buddy and this guy and this dude over here, all of you, need to be converted over to editable polys. Excellent. Now I'm just going to kind of start my way up here at the top. And let's grab edges, and I'll grab this edge, and let's see if we can loop it and slide it over a little bit. Now that started to look really weird, so make sure, that at least for a moment, we turn on edge constraints. So slide that over, and then that looks really good. Then we grab this polygon, let's frame up on it with the Z key, and let's do an extrusion. Okay. Now, let's switch over to edges. Uh, let's see, will it let me just handle doing this, you think? If I just click ring, yeah, it gets all those. Now, if I do another ring, well, I almost get what I want. I don't want that, and I don't want that, but I need these guys. And we could go ahead and grab these two. We need that, we need that, and we need that. So that all looks good. Okay, now uh, we need to chamfer, as we all know. So chamfer, awesome. It's the best looking shape ever. Let's leave it just like that. And pull that down, about like so. Click OK. Uh, let's grab our little, oh, get out of editable poly mode. Grab this little guy in here. Let's grab edges, and we'll grab these two edges, and we'll chamfer those. Click OK. Now, just kind of moving along, let's switch over here and we'll ring that. And let's chamfer. <laughs> that needs to be pulled down a little bit. And uh, let's see here if we jump out of editable poly mode and grab our little funny donut shape and whoops there we go and you sir thank you now is that ring gonna help me oh not ring excuse me folks I want loop yay loop and chamfer once again and yeah okay fantastic there we go looks good now these guys need to actually kinda look cylindrical when all is said and done so let's get out of edible poly mode on this guy. Let's grab this guy and let's do the chamfer. So, and yeah, if we add a segment, it actually kind of helps. And another segment helps even more. Okay. And actually, let's let's not be done there. Let's grab you and see what happens if we loop. You don't want to loop? Fine, I'll just cheat. We'll grab this guy and this guy and hold on control and switch those to edges and then we'll chamfer and you can't control it. Alright, so thump, and a little bit of rounding there and click OK and then jump out of here and hit this guy and hit two and then this dude and this dude and chamfer once again and I'll go back up to three segments and I'll clean all this up. And we'll switch over to faces, grab this face and this face, call then control to click edges, and then chamfer once again. Chamfer! And there we go. Alrighty. Alright, so all looking pretty good. Now, let's see here. Uh, we could group, but I don't really want to do that. So let's see, with this dude selected. And this dude will be fine for the pivot I'm going for. Actually, maybe let's go with this guy. Yeah, I think that'll work better. 
and let's switch on attach mode and we'll attach this guy and 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 this guy so they're all attached they're all the same object so now we can move them we can rotate them That looks like it's pretty much right where it needs to be. Maybe we could sink it into the shape just a little bit. Just for the fun of it. And let's open up our material editor and grab this guy and apply him. Press F4 to get rid of wires. And there we go. So yay, decoration. It goes a long way, doesn't it? And let's see. I pull back. You know, all this stuff looks a little bit different, but let's see, how much do I care about that? And the answer is not much. That actually looks better than what I saw there, so we'll go with that. Uh, but now we can't say that they're exactly the same on both sides. So this guy's got a flat plate and um, some sort of visual error by the looks of it. So let's see what that's all about. Oh, wrong object. Let's see, let's grab this guy. Huh. Let's see here. What on earth happened to you? Oh, you know, I see what happened. That bevel got pulled over. We must have selected through and just about broke something, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, so let's see if we can fix that. Well, let's see. If we grab edges, or I'm sorry, vertices. Now, I'm going to make sure edge constraint is on for just a moment, though I'm going to have to change that eventually. We can slide this back over. And that'll get it close, but still, it'll look a little weird because uh, the bevel is kind of on the same plane. Now, if we switch off edge constraint and we slide that out a little, actually, edge constraint should be off now, Zach. So, bump. And just kind of patch that up. All right, now let's see here. If I grab this guy and move him very gently, let's see if I lock selection. All right, let's just try it this way. Just try to get all these guys in a straight line. So a little bit of repair work there. Now let's get out of there. Just kind of pull back a little bit. And I think I nudged that, so let's undo that. And there we go. So that fixes that little craziness. So that's all looking pretty good. We've got some more decoration there. Now we can move on to the top part. Finally, they said, finally. All right, so let's go to create. Now, did I planarize the top of this? Does anybody remember? I don't remember. So let's just try it again. So grab, uh, well, make sure we grab the right object. We're going to get you. And this guy, please. Oh, we still locked our selection. Good work, Zach. Uh, let's grab polygons and you, and let's make sure we're going by angle, and we'll set this to about 10 degrees. And that grabs everybody, and let's just make sure that we planarize. Good. Now, let's go over to the Create panel. Let's grab a box. And what I'm going to do is, if we hang on, let's take a look. This little raised area, it starts right here at the front of this armor plate. It goes up to this little line here, which I don't even think this line technically exists on our model, but that's all right. It's kind of like right in here someplace. So let's just start about right there at that point. And we'll drag out a box, which is a beautiful shade of pink. Put it right about there and give it some height. Now let's get our move tool out. Let's set this over to view and we'll right click on X to make sure everything is nice and center. Let's drop on the symmetry modifier and make sure it's pointing in the right axis, which a lot of times I don't really know until I kind of start jamming. And that's probably, yeah, that's not going to work. We want this to be pointing in X. 
All right, now let's uh, convert this over. Actually, we don't even need the symmetry modifier. I kind of jumped the gun there. We need to convert this over to an editable poly. And then we can put a symmetry on it if we want to save ourselves some hassle. So then we can tap S 500,000 times. And grab our edges. And let's see, let's take this edge and we'll slide it in. And that looks terrible. And why does it look terrible? Well, probably because of the symmetry modifier. Oh, no, because we had uh, an extra edge in there that we didn't really need. So I'm just going to undo that. And since things have already been converted, I'm going to cheat here. Let's get you. And let's press F4 so I can see those wires really clearly. Let's get this guy and make sure that's been looped. And hold down Control and click Remove. And then get this guy and hold down Control and click Remove. And we can't see the one on the underside, but I can probably... Let's see, if I set this to an angle of 45 and I click on the underside, well, make sure we're ignoring back facing too. That should grab everybody. I can nuke those out and we should be pretty much good to go. Okay, now back to the lecture at hand. Let's grab this edge and slide it in. So we can get some tapering in that dimension and then we can get some tapering in this dimension as well. Now for this one, because we're at a slant here, I'm going to turn on edge constraint. And now that can slant a little bit on its own. This can also slant forward. And then we're going to turn off edge constraint, switch over to polygons. And I'm going to jump over from world to local mode and pull this down a bit because it's sticking up just a little bit high. And I'm just kind of tweaking shapes here. Now local, let's see if we switch that to parent, that'll probably be better. Actually, it slants back a little more than that. It's almost squared on the back, which is a nice indicator of how far to go. So we can pull that back a little, grab this guy, and he probably didn't need to move at all. So we'll just pull that back about like so. And let's see, it's got this little engraved little ring thing like we've done so many times at this point. And it's got another one, which, which I think is just a raised panel, which in our case is just a little block that we're going to add. Uh, but let's see, I'm going to pull this back out a little bit so it's not quite so severe. Then also, let's grab this guy and we'll just slide this out. And it looks like we might have left a vertex behind. You see that? So that needs to go bye-bye. And we don't really care what's going on on that side. It's going to get lost in the symmetry anyway. Pull that out. Looking nice. Okay, now this little uh, crushed in panel, not crushed in, uh, indented panel. So you got a little groove up there. See, to do this, I'm going to go ahead and convert over to an editable poly. Let's grab polygons up here up top. And for the time being, just because it's, uh, it'll, it's, it'll just make me feel better, and really it's a good reason to do anything, uh, let's remove that edge. I just want the edge, please. So you, let's see if I loop that all around, and remove. Good, so it's nice and clean now. Hit 4, grab this guy. Let's do an inset. And we'll just kind of pull the amount in. Now, if we double-check that, it looks like that would have to taper in along with the width of the head, because it looks pretty parallel here and pretty parallel there. So even though I, I don't really have a picture of it dead on from this angle, I'm still getting the impression that it tapers just like the rest of the head, which is great for me. That makes things a lot more convenient. But it does need to go about halfway up. So actually, let me cancel this, because here's what we're going to do. Let's grab, let's get out of here, and let's go get ours. Well, Quick Slice would probably do it, but I don't trust that. So let's grab polygons, let's, or elements, let's get the whole element there. So I don't know how to click individual polygons. And let's do the slice plane. And the reason I want to do that is so that I can determine where this inset is actually going to begin and save myself just a little bit of hassle. So now let's just grab this, we'll slide it forward a tiny bit, and I think that'll about do it. So let's go ahead and slice, get out of editable poly mode, then hit 4. Grab this guy, do an inset to about there. Double check. Um, it needs to come in a little bit at the top 
And since we're at such a skewed angle, uh, what I'm going to do is just bring the whole thing in a little more. And we'll call that. Yeah, I think we can work with that. So now we will bevel. And let's just zero these out. We're going to go down a tiny bit. We're going to inset just a tiny bit as well. And probably a lot less than that, actually. So let's just zero those out again. Let's go with negative 0.25 in both. And click OK. Now we'll extrude, and this can just go down a little bit. And now let's inset. Again, just a tiny little bit. And then we'll extrude up. So it's actually going up a little higher. And then we'll bevel again, this time to positive 25 in both directions. And click OK. All right, so now if we get out of here, press F4. And let's, uh, maybe we should apply our material so it doesn't look like our ad at walker is wearing a little pink hat. Which would be awesome. All right, sweet. Now, let's take a look over here. Uh, we've got, you know, a little interesting boxy guy on left and right. I wonder if we got any better pictures of those. Almost there. Not quite here. It's really out of focus. So, yeah, I could totally just make that up off the top of my head. At least that's what I'm thinking, anyhow. So, let's go over to Create, grab a box, Auto Grid is on. Let's just draw out a little box here. Let's give it a little bit of height. Frame up on it so I can see what it's doing. Let's take its width segments, and let me make sure I hit F4 so I can actually see these segments. Uh, width segments? No, not width segments. I don't want to mess with that. Um, so let's undo that. You go there. And let's see. Uh, let's do... Oh, it was width. I, I hit length by accident. Let's grab this guy. And I think that'll work to get us started. Yeah, I mean, I think whatever we, we do here is going to be fine. So I'm just going to totally make something up. So let's see here. Let's grab edges. Grab you. Oh, come on. Max and your selection. So... Oh, you're still a box. Well, of course, Zach. Boom. Blam. Yes. Sorry, I gotta kind of chastise myself sometimes. Makes me feel better. You, and hit ring, and scale, so that things look good. Roar. Okay, great. Now, four. Boom. Extrude. I really wish you could just shift, drag out, and extrusion. I think I've said that before, because you can do it with edges, and it makes sense. I just really wish you could do it with faces, too. Okay, and edges, and we'll just kind of squeeze this in. And you know what? I'm going to squeeze these guys in too. So they go down here. And then this guy can just, well, nah, we'll leave him right where he is for now. Now, uh, let's see. It looks like maybe some sort of raised spot. So I'm just going to go back to create a box, and let's just build a box. Ooh, that's kind of nasty looking, isn't it? Why, yes, Zach, it is. So let's make sure that whatever I did to this poor object didn't completely destroy it. What happens if I make this planar? Does it change at all? No, not especially. So, you know what? When in doubt, we'll just shift-drag copy to an object. Get out of here. Then hit four and let's extrude that and move and slide that up and take these guys and scale them in. And let's take this guy and let's move it down a little ways. Okay, so let's see here. That's kind of looking interesting. So let's see, if I pull that down and back, we can kind of sync that into the object. 
And then, I wonder if it'll let me get away with this without getting too crazy. I wonder if that's our normals doing that. You think if I fix smoothing groups, that would quit being so silly? Auto smooth to 45 degrees. Actually, let's do like 5 degrees. So I can get some, there we go, some nice razor sharp stuff. Now, back to cylinder. And <laughs> look, this is actually going to draw out really well now. So it's just those smoothing groups kind of biting us. It's interesting, isn't it? All right, now let's take our height segments down. Let's pull our sides down because we just don't need that many on something so little. Oh, by the way, if you haven't caught on, I have no idea. I mean, I can't really see this, so I'm just making up something that looks like it's important. More important than it probably really is. Uh, now, edges. So let's grab you and grab edges. Let's see here. If I grab this and grab an edge ring, what do I get? I get all those. That's actually really good. Now let's get all these two. Okay. And let's chamfer all this. Not quite that much, though. That does look really nice, doesn't it? Shoom. Okay. Now, let's see here. Actually, let's get out of there. Let's go back to this guy. There we are. And we'll do an inset. Let's extrude that just a little. Doesn't need to be very much. Let's uh, actually, hang on. C get back here, you. There we go. Let's grab faces, go by angle. Let's grab this top face, control click down to edges. And I don't really need these guys though. So let's deselect them. And let's chamfer that by just a little tiny amount. Give that some rounding. Uh, let's get out of editable poly, grab you and you. And let's see, both these need to be converted over to editable poly. So let's do that. Then let's go into one of them. There we go. And just for the fun of it, let's just attach one to the other. So now they're the same object. Let's get polygons, and I'm going to make these a little shorter because I just think they're sticking up a little too far. So, shoom. Like so, control click on edges to convert that over, chamfer those out, and something like so. Click OK, get out of here. Now, let's grab this, attach you, you, and you. Good, excellent. And then shift drag that over, click OK, grab both of them. Materials, I didn't mean to do that. And then drop this on. Boop. Press F4. And then whatever those are, we've got something up there now to take on whatever those are supposed to be. I think the only change I would make is that they're kind of sticking out a little far. So I would probably grab them both and just sink them in a little further. Like so. And there we go. So in what feels like no time flat, we've pretty much killed off uh, the length of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I wanted to thank everybody for watching. Also, a big thanks to all of our member sponsors. And I will catch you guys on the next episode of Modeling on the Fly. Take it easy.